So welcome all students again to another video tutorial from Genome Biotech and as always I am your host Dr. Nitin Wahi and in today's lecture we would be talking about the different types of questions that are being asked from protein biology. Okay, hopefully this uh, video is uh, effectively available to you all. You can write in the chat box that the screen is shareable and my voice is audible to you or not. Meri voice aari hai ki nahi aari. Screen dikhri hai ki nahi dikhri. Aap mujhe bata sakte hai. Please look here. See, the first and the foremost thing from where the questions are being asked in the case of protein amino acid is about the determination of molecular mass. Now, which type of questions are being asked? That we are going to look from the MCQ question booklet. And in that question booklet, you will get certain questions that are being asked. Now, I would be drawing certain structures in front of you and you will have to answer that uh, what is going to happen if the, uh, what, uh, what would be the weight of the protein uh, that we would be making. Now see, for calculating the average molecular weight of any amino acid, we say that the average molecular weight of an amino acid is 128 Dalton. So we take that the average molecular weight of an amino acid is in a protein structure is 128 Dalton. Okay. Now, because the molecular weight of water is being removed during peptide bond formation, so the weight of an amino acid residue is being tabulated to be 110 because 128 is the weight of an amino acid residue. And after removal of a water, because of the formation of a peptide bond, the weight of an amino acid residue will be equal to 110. I have marked these things with uh, these black lines. So this would be the weight of an amino acid residue. Now I would be telling you that which type of questions are being asked. Now the questions that are being asked in the case of amino acid in the case of protein are given in MCQ. If any one of you can uh, really share that up. If any one of you can really share that up in the group where you have the MCQ booklet there, which type of questions are being asked? There are two different formulas that have been formulated to describe the weight of a protein. Okay. Note the weight of a linear protein, the weight of uh, the molecular weight or weight or molecular weight of a linear protein of a linear protein is tabulated as tabulated as as okay how we are going to tabulate the weight of a linear protein for example there are n number of amino acids so the simple formula could be 128 into n okay 128 into n we are going to multiply this 128 into n that means there are n number of amino acids that are involved okay and then what is going to happen then there would be n minus num one number of bonds that are being involved. So there would be n minus one number of bonds. And what would be the, uh, the molecular weight that would be lost? 18. 18 into n minus one. So if you are going to solve this out, what you are going to get? Now, please listen to me. This is very, very important. Now, you are going to tabulate the weight of a linear protein. Now, what is a linear protein? Can you imagine what is a linear protein? There is an amino acid. There is another amino acid. There is another amino acid. Then there is amino acid. Okay. Supposingly, these amino acids are being joined together with each other for a very long period of time. And then there is a terminal amino acid. Now, supposingly, these are number of amino acids being equivalent to amino acid being equivalent to n number of amino acids. Now you have to calculate their weight. Okay, this is n number of amino acids. You have to calculate their weight. Now, how you are going to calculate their weight? The total number of amino acid weight would be 128 into n. And now you are going to subtract the weight of the water molecule that will be lost. Because you know in peptide bond formation, there is a water molecule that is being lost. See, whenever peptide bond is being produced, a water molecule is being lost. So here the calculation says that 128 into N means the total weight of the polypeptide without the loss of any water molecule. Okay. But now as the water molecule is lost, as the water molecule is being lost, so minus 18. Now see, if there are four amino acid residues, how many bonds will be present in between these four amino acid residues? Can you imagine? 
there would be three bonds present in between the four amino acid residues see count the number of bonds 1 2 3 okay so if we assume that there is n number of bonds which are present n number of amino acids which are present then can you imagine how many number of bonds will be present in between n number of amino acids there would be n minus 1 number of bonds present between n amino acid so here what you get is that 128 into n minus 18 into n plus n minus 1 and if somebody would be smart enough among you then you can also say that sir if all the amino acids are present in a particular ring shaped structure supposingly i am trying to make this ring no problem i will make a ring now in this format okay i am making a ring now supposingly if all the amino acids are present in a ring like a structure okay there are amino acids present at every place in this particular ring then what is going to happen what would be the molecular weight of such type of amino acid okay so that we have to look forward that what would be the weight of such type of amino acid just a minute no i have to select another tool uh, probably where is that tool now amino acids are present everywhere amino acid amino acid amino acid these red uh, color crosses indicate amino acid and these amino acid are present in a particular circle then what is going to happen then how many number of bonds will be produced if there are n number of amino acid then n number of bonds will be produced no sure you are wrong uh, in this particular regard now please look here see when you are talking about the molecular weight of a linear protein is tabulated as you can tabulate the molecular weight of a linear protein 110 into n plus 18 plus 18 this would be the molecular weight this would be come uh, this would come out in dalton this is the unit of the molecular weight that is being tabulated now how can you imagine this now supposingly there are n amino acid which are present in linear manner this is present in linear manner okay now take the same case n amino acid amino acids amino acids amino acids amino acids there are several amino acid in circular manner okay in circular manner amino acid n in circular manner okay n in circular manner now there is a circular manner then what is going to happen if supposingly there are four amino acid there are four candidates now imagine there are four candidates and they are making a circle by holding their hands so how many number of bonds are being produced here there are four bonds which are being produced so the molecular weight how can you calculate the molecular weight here the molecular weight here the molecular weight will be equivalent to here the molecular weight will be equivalent to 110 into n okay here the molecular weight will be equivalent to 110 into n because n number of amino acid in a circular chain will have n number of peptide bonds and if there are n number of amino acid in a linear chain they will have n minus 1 number of peptide bonds now listen to what i said in hindi also dekho agar n amino acids hain लीनियर चेन में तो उनका मोलिकुलर वेट क्या होगा अरे भाई सर्कुलर का कैलकुलेट कर लो और उसको तोड़ के लीनियर बना लो यू कैलकुलेट द वेट ऑफ अमीनो एसिड रेजिड्यू इन अ सर्कुलर चेन एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स जस्ट यू हैव टू डू वन थिंग यू हैव टू ब्रेक दिस वन पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड एंड ट्रांसफॉर्म दिस सर्कुलर मॉलिक्यूल इन टू अनियर वन this is how linear molecules are being produced you just break a peptide bond how can you break a peptide bond just add a water molecule just simple just add a water molecule you just add a water molecule and the bond will be broken down this is the water molecule that is being added you just add the water molecule here and you will be able to break the bond which is present okay So this is how, and the circular molecule getting converted into linear one. Now see, dear students, I can understand that majority of you might be having certain queries with regard to this. 
what I am trying to explain it to you. I will take an example. Please do share the MCQ booklet uh, in our group uh, along with me because I'm not having that one uh, presently so that I can uh, just give you a model question and we can solve that up. Okay. Now, this is all over from my side. This is how we have to tabulate the weight of a protein. Now, see, this formula, these formulas are always applicable, but you have to remember one thing. These formulae are not given in Pathfinder. These have been developed from other books. Okay. This is the first formula. This is the second formula. This is for linear protein and that is for circular protein in nature. This is for a linear protein is tabulated as by using this particular formula for a circular protein. The molecular weight is equal to 110 and 20. But there are two exceptional cases. Now you calculate the molecular weight of a 100 amino acid long glycine when you are talking about glycine and the question paper question designer talks about glycine that clearly means now this value of 110 will be altered okay what is going to happen glycine has a molecular weight of 75 and if it is going to form the polypeptide 75 minus 18 that value will come here so what would be that value 57N for glycine, the formula would be 57N, 57N plus 18. For tryptophan, what is the value or molecular weight of tryptophan? 204 Dalton. Okay, so minus 18. If you want to calculate the weight of a tryptophan residue, the weight of a tryptophan residue equals to 204 minus 18. Okay, so 204 minus 18 would be the weight of tryptophan residue. So that comes out to be anyone 186 so the formula would be 186 n and the other formula would be 186 n plus 18 dalton do you understand that up if you find any problem any query you just ask please anybody has any query Anyone wants to ask anything, you can ask in the chat box. Do not hesitate because such type of questions will be asked in the examination. There you have to answer such questions. Okay, please share such questions in the group also. Uh, and you must solve them up. If you have any query, you can always ask them. Okay. Okay, I do think that you have none. Now, we are going to look towards the loss of protein structure. Now, what do you mean by loss of protein structure? Now, how the protein is going to lose their structure? Please note all these things. These things are very important because these formulas are not even given in Pathfinder. Okay. Loss of protein structure. What do you mean by loss, in, loss of protein structure? Now, the loss of protein structure refers to how the protein structure is being lost. This could be effectively remembered by using a particular trick. Okay, that trick is, I have already told many of the students, what is the trick? That trick is referred to as hat door. Okay, this is a door. Okay, probably a door. And there is a hat which is present over this door. That is referred to as hat door. Now, what do you mean by hat door? I'm just uh, going to solve this out. Okay, probably I will make one. Mm, uh, can I make a hat? Okay, there is one hat. Now see this, I have made an hat here. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to make an hat. Okay. Okay, this is a hat present over the door. So the trick is hat door. Okay, this is a fancy hat. Hat, which we put over our uh, head. And this is hat door. So the trick is hat door. Trick is hat door. Okay, you can say D double O R door. Now see this. What do you mean by head door? Now see, H stands for heavy metal ion. A stands for strong acid or base. T stands for temperature. I would be writing all these things in front of you so that you can understand them up probably. If you are paying attention, you would be able to understand them. Okay. So they could be remembered by using this trick that is referred to as head door. Head means, H means heavy metal ion. Heavy 
metal ion metal ion okay a means strong acid strong acid or base acid or base t means temperature high temperature high temperature e means use of detergent detergents o means organic solvent organic solvent r means reducing it now these are the different compounds that causes the destruction in the structure of protein now you can remember this here uh, just a minute we can show you there also see this h stands for heavy metal ion a stands for strong acid or base t stands for temperature d stands for detergent o stands for organic solvent and r stands for reducing agent so these are the components that will disrupt the structure of the protein okay so any of these component whenever you are going to add it will disrupt or it will inhibit the structure of the protein now how the structure of the protein is being inhibited what happens with the case of denaturation what do you mean by denaturation now denaturation essentially does not means the breakage of the covalent interaction it actually means the breakage of non covalent interaction you can look forward okay many physical and chemical agents can disrupt a protein native conformation there are several different types of physical and chemical agent that can disrupt the protein native conformation the process of structural disruption is called as denaturation the structural disruption of protein is called as denaturation denaturation include the breaking of non covalent interaction very important denaturation does not mean that the protein undergo breakage of the covalent interaction such as peptide bond such as disulfide linkages it essentially means that there is the breakage of non covalent interaction non covalent interactions are being lost okay when non covalent interactions are being lost then it is referred to as denaturation this is what is referred to as denaturation okay now the denaturation include the breakage of hydrogen bond van der waals forces of interaction hydrophobic interaction etc i would be telling you about all these different types of interactions also now denaturation is not usually considered to include breakage of the peptide bond very important denaturation does not mean that the peptide bond is broken in fact in majority of the denaturations the peptide bond is never broken depending upon the degree of denaturation the molecule may participate or completely lose its biological activity that depends upon the molecule it may completely denature or it may lose its biological activity forever now what happens in the case of a strong acid and base okay you can also remember this why head door so let us go with heavy metal ion first okay now see this this is heavy metal ion now what is going to happen with the heavy metal ions okay these are the one that will disrupt salt bridges okay heavy metal ion disrupt salt bridges formed between ionic bond between negatively charged groups okay ionic bonds with negatively charged groups now what happens what are salt bridges salt bridges are weak form of ionic interaction between a positively charged molecule and a negatively charged molecule i am writing the definition of salt bridge here okay salt bridges bridges are weak form of uh, sorry this would be wwk weak form of ionic interaction weak form of ionic interactions interactions in between positively and negatively charged molecule between positively and a negatively and a negatively charged molecule negatively charged molecule okay uh, it is moving out of frame okay so there these are the actually weak form of interaction present between positively and negatively charged molecule now in the structure of protein there are certain molecules which are positively charged 
there are certain molecules which are negatively charged so what are basically salt bridges salt bridges are weak form of ionic interaction present in between positively charged and negatively charged molecules so if you look here if this is the structure of protein okay if this is the structure of alpha halide there can be a positively charged amino group present here okay there was a positively charged amino group present here and there was a negatively charged carboxylic group present here okay so there was a negatively charged carboxylic group and then what happens there was an interaction between these two positively charged and negatively charged molecules together with each other theek hai then such type of interaction are referred to as salt bridges weak form of ionic interaction between a positively charged molecule and a negatively charged molecule is referred to as salt bridges in chemistry you would have studies these types of reaction these are two different half cells if you could remember there was a bridge like structure which was being produced here this bridge like structure was referred to as salt bridge there were electrodes which were being attached here and the bulb was being attached and the bulb began to glow this all you have studied that one was connecting the two half cells the salt bridge was connecting the two half cells together with each other and was making the circuit completed in the case of an electrochemical cell as they were connecting the two half cell together with each other here the salt bridge connects a positively charged molecule and a negatively charged molecule present within the structure of protein through ionic interaction okay these heavy metal ions breaks these ionic interactions by coming in between them now see this is a protein there was an positively charged amino group okay there was an positively charged amino group present on one side okay there is a negatively charged carboxylic group present on the other side what happens in the middle came magnesium ion okay then magnesium ion will bind with this particular molecule and there would be no interaction between this amino group and carboxylic group so this magnesium ion is going to disrupt the protein stability which is being produced okay so there was an interaction going on we have lost lots of in lots of teachers in this group those teachers could understand that there are several different types of interactions in between student and a teacher is the most disturbing person who always disturbs such type of interaction especially during farewell okay so this is how the interactions are being disturbed in the presence of heavy metal ions such as magnesium ion and such as the lead ions so these are the ones that will disrupt such type of interactions now please listen here we move forward h a t now what is happening with the case of temperature now an increase or decrease in the case of temperature temperature leads to molecular vibrations being created now when temperature will lead to the molecular vibrations then every molecule is going to vibrate just like the cursor is vibrating over your screen okay every molecule in the protein is going to vibrate when every molecule in the protein is going to vibrate then hydrogen bonds wonderful forces of interaction are disrupted and the protein unfolds okay so majority of the proteins gets unfolded when the temperature is being raised because temperature raising cause every molecule to alter its orientation because it increases the vibrational state in the protein molecule it is going to change the vibrations okay as the vibrations are going to be altered as the vibrations are going to take place so all the different types of bonds are going to be broken down molecular vibration increases all the different types of bonds such as hydrogen bonds van der waal interaction are disrupted and the protein is going to unfold itself okay this is what happens in the case of temperature now the next important point hat hat okay sorry uh, acid and base acid and base causes protonation and deprotonation changes in the ph result in the protonation and deprotonation now when you decrease the ph what happens when you decrease the ph you increase the number of protons because ph equals to minus log h positive ion everybody knows that okay because ph equals to minus log h positive ion so ph is inversely proportional to the concentration of protons so you increase the ph you decrease the proton concentration you decrease the ph you increase the proton concentration so a change in the ph result in protonation and deprotonation of the side group of the amino acid 
in the case of protein which alters hydrogen bond and salt bridge pattern so these are the one which will alter the hydrogen bond as well as the salt bridge pattern in the structure of the protein molecules okay now there are organic solvent h a t g o r d o r means detergents detergent disrupt hydrophobic interactions now what do you mean by hydrophobic interaction hydrophobic interaction is a type of interaction which the hydrophobic molecules makes with the water molecules then such type of interactions is referred to as hydrophobic interaction now what is the mechanism of hydrophobic interaction that must be understood because these are the most most complex type of interactions okay to uh, to be understood okay now that has to be understood with the help of a figure that we will be looking forward okay uh, so i'm so what is going to happen now see if there is a lean person and that lean person is going to fight with a sumo molecule then what is going to happen i wouldn't would be sharing some images with you all okay um, just a minute now this image would be used to explain what is hydrophobic interaction i'm just moving to another molecule okay can you get it second okay i have that image resume share open share now see this is what is going to happen now see this is our water molecule uh, okay and this is our oil molecule now water molecule when is going to catch this oil molecule it would be able to catch the oil molecule no it will the oil molecule is going to slip because the oil molecule is very larger and the water molecule is very smaller so this type of interaction leads to the hydrophobic interaction now see water molecule being very smaller will never be able to capture the large sized hydrophobic molecule and thus that large size hydrophobic molecule will be pushed backward now see you have to imagine something now see there is a game of kabaddi going on okay please listen all of you must imagine this situation now there is a person there are some matlab there are some of our students who are very lean and then and that student is being told okay to fight with a sumo because sumo is sumo is coming uh, coming in front of you and now you have to grab him you won't be able to grab him but ultimately you will end pushing him backward because of hydrophobic interaction now what happens in the case of hydrophobic interaction is that water molecules these are water molecules small small water molecule h2 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 it is going to form a circle in the game of kabaddi what happens you have to form a circle circle around the opponent now this opponent is very large you won't be able to make a effective circle around him so you cannot catch this particular opponent then what is going to happen ultimately you will push this particular opponent and the opponent will move towards back side dekho agar ek bahut hi bada koi person hai koi molecule hai aapko bola jaye haathi ko pakad ke dikhao if you were being told that do have a catch of an elephant then you would be able to catch that elephant with your own hands no you won't be able to catch that particular elephant because that is very large so this is what happens with the oil molecule this is oil molecule this is the oil molecule water molecules water molecules being very small are never able to make solvation sphere around the oil molecule they cannot make a sphere around the oil molecule just like in the game of kabaddi so ultimately what happens is that this water molecule pushes the oil molecule backward and all the oil molecules began to began to move towards each other ultimately forming larger oil droplets okay so the first case is that you are catching an elephant and the second case is that as you began to catch that elephant that elephant is growing in its size because large number of droplets are coming in and they are becoming very large and so water molecule will never be able to form a solvation sphere around such a large molecule this is what is referred to as hydrophobic interaction why oil seems to appear to be hydrophobic it began to move away from the water 
and then forms a large oil oil droplet because all the oil molecules are going to move uh, move because of the inability of water to form the solvation sphere around the oil molecules and they will combine with each other they will form a larger oil droplet dekhiye water ke molecules bahut chote hain to wo kabhi bhi oil droplets ke charo taraf ek sphere nahi bana payenge kyunki wo sphere nahi bana payenge to wo kabhi bhi completely oil ko dissolve nahi kar payenge this is what happens in the case of hydrophobic interaction और सारी ही सारी ऑयल ड्रॉपलेट्स आपस में एक दूसरे की तरफ मूव करेंगी और एक दूसरे में फ्यूज हो जाएंगे ना द नेक्स्ट वन दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट इज एच ए टी डी ओ आर ऑर्गेनिक सोलवेंट ना ऑर्गेनिक सोलवेंट आर ऑल्सो द वन विच डिस्टर्ब द हाइड्रोफोबिक इंट्रैक्शन दीज आर दन विच डिस्टर्ब द हाइड्रोफोबिक इंट्रैक्शन all the detergent disrupt the organic uh, disrupt the hydrophobic interaction that is why if you have a spot of oil over your t-shirt what do you use we use rain we use nirma such type of detergents are being used and if you have a grease spot over your shirt over any any cloth what you use we use petrol or we use ether we use ethanol in order to get it dissolved because these are all molecules that can dissolve the hydro that can dissolve all such organic molecule and can break the hydrophobic interaction in between them so h a t d o r last is reducing agent now reducing agents will be the one that will disrupt the disulfide linkages where are the reducing agents okay so reducing agents such as urea beta mercapto ethanol okay they are the one that disrupt the disulfide linkages within the structure of the protein these are the one that will disrupt the disulfide linkages once the disulfide linkages are being lost then the structure of protein will also be lost this is what happens in the structure of protein now there was a scientist who was referred to as christian alfensen and he gave a very important concept again thrice the questions have been asked and that concept is referred to as al fensen fensen dogma again not given in pathfinder neither in old nor in new pathfinder so you have a have to study about al fensen fensen dogma now what is al fensen experiment first you have to study then you have to study about al fensen dogma okay now see alfensen took an enzyme a very important enzyme okay that is referred to as ribonucleotide reductase okay now that ribonucleotide reductase that he took he just a minute where are we are okay we are on this particular page okay when he took the protein ribonucleotide reductase okay this is the ribonucleotide reductase or the ribonuclease and he took two different molecules one was referred to as the reducing agent another one was referred to as the denaturant his experiment is described in this particular figure let us just go to this particular figure firstly he used ek molar urea and beta mercapto ethanol as you know that beta mercapto ethanol is itself a reducing agent in nature okay so this is beta mercapto ethanol is a reducing agent reducing agent okay so this is a reducing agent this has an ability to break down the disulfide linkages okay and two molar urea is a denaturant denaturant this is a denaturant in nature it has the property of causing the denaturation of protein now what is going to happen all the disulfide bonds in the ribonucleases are going to be broken okay so there are four disulfide bonds which are present that means there are eight cysteine residue and all these eight cysteine residue have broken their bonds this is denatured ribonuclease okay this is denatured ribonuclease which has been produced so i'm showing it to you that this is the denatured ribonuclease enzyme that has been produced because of our work with beta mercapto ethanol and six molar urea now oxidation of sulfhydryl group in the absence of urea now you remove urea and beta mercapto ethanol when you remove urea as well as beta mercapto ethanol there is a native ribonuclease which is being produced but in the second case in the second case you have removed beta mercapto ethanol 
but eight molar urea is present it will lead to the formation of an scrambled structure that means the structure of the ribonuclease formed will not be perfect one what this experiment is trying to tell is that whether a protein which has been denatured can renature itself ek protein jo denature ho chuki hai kya wo renature ho sakti hai yes it could be renatured yes it could be renatured it's very simple but if a protein if a protein which has been denatured in the presence of a denaturating agent do it can renature no it can't no this protein can't okay now there are certain things that i have to tell you that i must inform you up here first what is the probability for formation of correct disulfide linkages the probability for the formation of correct disulfide linkages in the presence of a denaturating agent is equals to 1 upon 105 now how that is being calculated probability probability for making correct disulfide linkages disulfide linkages is now how disulfide linkages are going to be produced there are eight molecules which are there there are eight uh, eight cysteine residues which are present now look here this is very important there are eight cysteine residues so i am writing all these eight cysteine as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 and 8 cysteine residues okay now supposingly one molecule the first atom the first molecule can make how many number of bonds how many different types of disulfide bonds can be produced first second third fourth sorry fourth fifth sixth and seventh these are the seven different types of bonds that could be produced that means the probability can be calculated by using the formula that is equivalent to 1 upon 7 into 5 into 3 sorry into 3 into 1 now why i am reducing this particular number why i am writing it as such you might have several different questions dear students probability is always being calculated out of 1 okay so the probability of formation of correct disulfide linkages can not be greater than 1 okay when the uh, the reducing agent has been removed and only urea is present now you must understand when reducing agent is going to be removed disulfide bonds are going to be produced but why these disulfide bonds will be produced correctly there is a probability that we have to calculate and how we are calculating this probability now supposingly first and eighth have formed a bond and this is the correct formation of bond then what is the probability out of 7 how many number of correct bonds were there there was only one so the probability is 1 upon 7 okay now this molecule the second cysteine residue can bind with how many different types of cysteine residue it can bind with one it can bind with two it can bind with three it can bind with four it can bind with fifth one okay so there is five probability that out of these five any one would be correct so there would be one upon five now if second has formed a bond with seven and this is the correct position how many will remain third fourth fifth and sixth third will have a probability to form disulfide linkages with fourth fifth and sixth that means and out of them one would be correct one upon three supposingly if third also make a disulfide linkage with six okay then what is the probability between four and five to make a disulfide bond only one so the probability of making correct disulfide linkages in this particular experiment was found to be 1 upon 105 okay you can calculate this out 73 21 21 into 5 equals to 1 upon 105 This is a classical result that Christian Alfensen obtained from his 
experiment. His experiment clearly revealed that a protein which has been denatured can also be renatured. A protein which has been denatured can only be renatured in a correct orientation only when the denaturant as well as the reducing agent are being removed. But if you have altered the entire conformation of the protein, then the protein will never be renatured. Okay. Now, coming back with some very important and very easy lessons that you have already understood. So how many of you have uh, isolated the protein from a solution? You have isolated a protein from the solution? Yes, all of you, all of you have isolated proteins from a solution. You are such a great scientist now. You have been isolating protein from a solution. Okay. And daily, at least two to three times a day, you are isolating proteins from a solution. कम से कम दिन में तीन चार बार तो प्रोटीन को तुम सॉल्यूशन से आइसोलेट कर ही लेते हो अभी मैं वो एग्जांपल कोट करने वाला हूं नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू कोट दोस एग्जांपल्स वेयर डेली यू आर आइसोलेटिंग डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ प्रोटीन फ्रॉम द सॉल्यूशन ना व्हाट वी हैव स्टडीड इन आवर प्रीवियस सेक्शन डीनेचुरेशन कंडीशंस ऑफ द प्रोटीन लॉस ऑफ प्रोटीन स्ट्रक्चर ना इफ यू आर गोइंग टू ड्रिंक टी और कॉफी हैव यू एवर ड्रिंक टी और कॉफी डेली और मिल्क Uh, you are drinking any things, any of these things in your daily life. What happens is that when you boil the milk and you have a hot milk or a hot coffee or a hot tea, and you took this uh, hot tea in your hand, what happens is that there is a creamy layer which is being produced as the tea, coffee, or the milk began to cool down. That creamy layer contain. the different types of protein and one such protein is casein okay see have you ever added uh, citric acid into milk what happens is that milk would get spoiled jaise hum hindi mein bol dete milk phat jayega what happens when milk uh, get spoiled in that particular case the water and the casein protein gets separated okay this is what is referred to as isoelectric precipitation listen this very carefully dear all students milk ke phatne ko jante ho doodh phat jata hai doodh kaise phat jata hai how does milk get sold okay how to make a cheese or how to make paneer paneer kabhi dekha to hoga ha lekin tum logo ne keval khaya hai banaya hai kisi ne nahi i knew this very well that you are only good at eating never at making okay so you can look here you have performed the first experiment and what is the first experiment the first experiment that you have performed is isoelectric precipitation of protein okay this is the isoelectric point you took milk you add what uh, you add citric acid to it what will happen the milk protein casein protein will gets separated because uh, there is a point which has been reached which is referred to as isoelectric point as the casein protein reaches the isoelectric point so casein protein began to precipitate out of the milk this is referred to as isoelectric precipitation this is referred to as isoelectric precipitation of protein this is how you have been precipitating out proteins okay in your daily life and out of that protein what happens uh, if you would have if anybody has made cheese then what you do with that particular protein you isolate that protein you press that protein remove water and that protein part is being fermented to make cheese are bhai paneer kabhi banaya hai keval khaya hi hai to agar kabhi tumne paneer banaya hai to paneer ko banane mein pehle doodh ko phada jata hai uske andar salt dala jata hai ya uske andar kya dal di jati hai citric acid dal diya jata hai citric acid dalne se protein kya ho jati hai precipitate out ho jati hai this is referred to as isoelectric precipitation of protein isoelectric point pe ho raha hai ठीक है तो एक बार प्रोटीन प्रेसिपिटेट हो गई उस प्रोटीन को बाहर निकाला उस प्रोटीन के अंदर से वाटर को बाहर निकाला और उस प्रोटीन से आपने क्या बना लिया बाद में फर्मेंट करके चीज बना लिया नाउ सम स्टूडेंट्स माइट बी थिंकिंग सर सर देयर इज वन क्वेश्चन कैन सर देयर माइट बी एन क्वेश्चन इनटू योर माइंड दैट इफ द मिल्क हैज बिकम सोल्ड बिकॉज़ ऑफ द फॉर्मेशन बिकॉज़ ऑफ द एडिशन ऑफ सिट्रिक एसिड कैन वी मेक द प्रोटीन गेट डिसॉल्व विद इन द मिल्क क्या फटे हुए दूध को सही किया जा सकता है हाँ किया जा सकता है बहुत सिंपल है अगर कोई दूध फट गया है तो उसका मतलब क्या है एसिड बन गया है ना उसके अंदर 
भाई एसिड बन गया है ना एसिड को न्यूट्रलाइज कर दो कैसे न्यूट्रलाइज करोगे एसिड को बेस डाल दो घर में पड़ा होगा रिन सर्फ उसे डाल दो न्यूट्रलाइज हो जाएगा फिर से मिल्क बन जाएगा जो यू कैन यस आप फटे हुए दूध को भी सिल सकते हैं अगर आप उसके अंदर क्या डाल दे बेस डाल दे तो लेकिन होता क्या है जब आप उसे बॉईल कर देते हो तब वो फटता है ऐसे ही पता नहीं चलता कि वो फट गया है कि नहीं फट गया है तो उसमें क्या होता है उस प्रॉब्लम में क्या होता है प्रोटीन अपना स्ट्रक्चर लॉस कर देती है इसकी वजह से वो बार बार रीगेन नहीं हो पाता अदरवाइज बिना बॉईल किए पहले उसका पीएच मीटर से उसका पीएच टेस्ट कर लो पीएच को न्यूट्रलाइज कर दो फिर बॉइल करो देखो दूध फटेगा ही नहीं बिल्कुल भी ठीक है सो वॉट आई टोल्ड यू हेयर इज दैट दैट इफ द मिल्क बिकम सोर Then, then you, uh, then when you began to boil that particular milk for making tea or coffee, then you find that the protein began to precipitate out. This is called as souring of milk. And the protein that precipitated out of this milk, na, that is being used in the manufacturing of cheese. That is how the homemade cheese is being made in Indian, uh, Indian villages and in Indian cities. And this is how we work. This is referred to as isoelectric precipitation of protein. Now, listen here. Now what happens when you add these molecules? Now you have heated the protein molecules. When you have heated the protein molecules, the protein alters its structure. Now if you would have ever eaten an egg, then what happens? The egg proteins alters their conformation when the egg is being heated. Okay, this is how the heating effect causes the change in the concentration of uh, change in the structure of protein. Okay. Okay, next is uh, this is what I had to tell you. Now this is uh, this is a classical question that I have explained. Probability for making the correct disulfide linkages is one upon one zero five. You can uh, attempt this particular question. This is this is what is given. An enzyme RNA is A require the formation of four disulfide linkages among its eight res cysteine residue. There are eight cysteine residue. There are eight cysteine residue, and there are four disulfide bonds which are to be produced. Okay, if this entirely a random phenomena, the probability that the first correct disulfide bond will be produced is one upon seven. For the same logic, what is the probability for formation of four disulfide bond is one upon seven, one upon five into one upon three equals to one upon one zero five. This is an experiment which proved that the protein get denatured in the presence of a denaturant and the presence of a reducing agent. If both these molecules are being removed, then the protein can renature. The classical concept, which was given by American biochemist Russian Alpenson on refolding of ribonucleus protein, stated that when a protein is allowed to renature, see this. This is what he state. I'm just underlining this particular point. When the protein, when the protein is allowed to renature by removing the denaturant and the reductant, the proteins. Regains its native conformation along with the formation of four correct disulfide bonds. There are four correct disulfide bonds which have been produced. Okay, just a second. Now, how the protein was able to regain its correct conformation? For that, you will have to look towards me. Okay. Uh... Okay, I have brought some protein for you. Now you would be looking at the video part. Now, see, dear all the students, I have a protein molecule in my hand. Okay, see, this is a protein molecule that I have in my hand. Now this protein, if this protein has gotten a particular conformation, if I use Q fix here, if I use Q fix here, 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 and here, if I am using two three places where I have added Q fix. And then I'm going to alter its conformation. Then what what will happen? And I will leave it. It will regain its conformation because there are places where cufix has been attached. That cufix is being indicated by the disulfide bonds which are present within the structure of the protein. Okay, so the disulfide bonds which are present within the structure of this particular protein will cause it to orient in a particular manner. क्योंकि डाइसल्फाइड बॉन्ड्स प्रेजेंट थे इसलिए प्रोटीन एक इफेक्टिव ओरिएंटेशन में दोबारा से अपने आप को रीगेन कर लेगा आई एम जस्ट स्टॉपिंग द वीडियो हियर ओके नाउ यू लुक एट थ्योरी ओके इफ द डाइसल्फाइड बॉन्ड्स वुड बी वुड बी प्रेजेंट देन द प्रोटीन विल रिज्यूम इट्स डिफरेंट कॉन्फॉर्मेशन व्हेन द रिडक्टेंट इज रिड्यूम इज रिमूव्ड नाउ सी दिस व्हेन द रिडक्टेंट इज रिमूव्ड 
while the denaturant is still present the disulfide bonds again form in protein but most of the disulfide bonds which are being formed are incorrectly paired those disulfide bonds are not correctly paired they are incorrectly paired they are not present in a particular direction or in a particular orientation okay so if you are going to remove only one molecule that is you have removed a reductant but you have not reduced not removed the denaturant you have not removed the denaturant denaturant is still present then what is going to happen you will get a scrambled ribonuclease with very less chances for renaturation okay if you can't get it you do write to me you just whatsapp me i will answer a query this is what christian alfensen told that protein can only get renatured only when both the reducing agent and the denaturant are being removed if only one is being removed then the protein won't be able to renature itself okay now what is christian alfensen dogma what do you mean by christian alfensen dogma uh for these discovery christian alfensen was also given the nobel prize for his work nasi okay there is a query how can we calculate probability of a scrambled protein if yes then how see probability for the formation of a scrambled protein can be factively tabulated trishla i have just told you here nasi probability if you can calculate the probability for the formation of correct disulfide linkages is 1 upon 105 so what would be the chances for the formation of a scrambled ribonucleus scrambled ribonucleus is 1 minus 1 upon 105 okay you can calculate that probability also now see this probability the ability of making of making a scrambled a m b a d structure equals to 1 minus 1 upon 105 okay this is how you get the probability because some of the probability either this protein is going to renature or this protein is not going to renature you calculate the probability of its re correct renaturation subtracted from one you get the probability of getting an scrambled structure this is what you get and if you are not going to remove the reducing agent as well as denaturant then you will never get a protein renature 100% the protein will remain always denatured in nature okay now uh, next what we have to study is okay i got another query so can you uh, sir can we calculate probability of a scrambled protein i have already answered it to you okay now next what we have to study is that we have studied all these things now there is christian alfensen dogma okay so let me move to this uh, page of wikipedia now alfensen dogma which is a thermodynamic hypothesis is a postulate in molecular biology that state that at least for a small that at the, that states that at least for a small globular protein in its standard physiological environment the native structure is determined only by the protein amino acid sequence majority of the proteins majority of the proteins which are smaller in size their structure is being determined by only the protein amino acid sequences okay now what do you mean by this christian alfensen told that how to determine the structure of protein supposingly there is a protein molecule this is a protein molecule now which type of structure this particular protein is going to assume that will depend upon which type of amino acid it has okay if it has a hydrophobic amino acid in larger amount this protein will will assume a fibrous structure it will assume a fibrous structure like this if this protein if this protein has hydrophilic amino acid it will assume a globular structure we are going to talk about all these things how hydrophilic amino acid when hydrophilic amino acid will be present then amino acid will be present at the surface and all those amino acid will be able to interact with water molecules 
as such type of amino acid which are present at the surface are interacting with water molecule when large number of amino acid are hydrophilic the protein is globular when large number of amino acid are hydrophobic the protein is fibrous okay now see your hair protein your hair protein is a fibrous protein fibrous protein never interact with water molecule kitna bhi pani dal do baal nahi chale jayenge अब मैं अपनी बात नहीं कर रहा हूँ नालायक हो ठीक है सो so, कितना भी पानी अपने सिर पर डाल दो आपके बाल नहीं घुलने वाले क्यों नहीं घुलने वाले बिकॉज योर हेयर आर इज मेड अप ऑफ फेराट एंड प्रोटीन विच इज अस प्रोटीन बट वॉट अबाउट हिमोग्लोबिन यू नो दैट इफ योर योर ब्लड इज गोइंग टू मूव इन वॉटर इफ योर इफ यू ड्रॉप अ ब्लड ड्रॉप अ drop of blood in water the water will become will become reddish because the because the blood contain the hemoglobin protein which is a globular protein and globular protein will get dissolved in water okay so this is what christian alfensen told now after this information which has been provided to you about christian alfensen there is another question which has been asked in the csir net entrance examination and that question is of 2019 where it has been asked that how the proteins are going to alter their conformation how the protein folding takes place okay and what is referred to as the molten globular state of protein okay so that's a completely new topic that we would be talking about uh, but moving back firstly to pathfinder i would be making certain things clear to you that what are these different types of proteins now see we are moving to lipin cot now i am just making certain things clear to you okay lipin cot is visible to you all okay most probably okay so this is a globular protein the structure that you are going to find here is that of hemoglobin now see this there is an spherical structure and there is an iron molecule which is present iron atom which is present in the center so this is the structure of the hemoglobin molecule it is a globular protein you can see there is an iron and there are ring shaped structures which are present so this is the globular protein that will get dissolved in water okay now what about the fibrous protein when you are going to talk about the fibrous protein now i'm just moving towards a fibrous protein now fibr see the structure of globular protein are highly compact and what would be the structure of fibrous protein the structure of fibrous protein will be highly elongated fibrous protein will have longer structure and they will never be able to interact with water molecule such type of protein will interact with oil molecules because they are hydrophobic in nature why you put oil in your hair you put oil in your hair because hair can interact with oil hair is also fibrous protein and the oil is also fibrous okay now see this uh, just a minute i'm moving to that particular page it's moving very slowly just a minute Now, see, we are going to talk about fibrous protein. Now, see, in the case of collagen, how is fibrous protein arranged? Fibrous protein is arranged in the form of long, elongated alpha helical structures in nature. You can look here. This is how fibrous proteins are arranged. Fibrous proteins are arranged in this helical conformation. Somebody asked me about collagen. Now, now you look there. There are three different colors. If you can look, one is blue, another one is green, the third one. is reddish and all the three different all these three different lines are moving one across the other they are left handed alpha helical structure moving across each other in a right handed orientation this is how collagen structure is being produced so this is the basic difference between a globular protein and a fibrous protein in nature okay moving back to pathfinder uh, where is pathfinder okay moving back back to pathfinder here we are we will be talking about the solubility of protein now how the solubility of protein is being influenced the solubility of protein is being influenced by three different factors one is referred to as ph another one is referred to as ionic strength and the third one is referred to as solvent okay now see this is what i was telling you you took uh, citric fruits or you took lemon you add lemon solution into milk then what is going to happen you took lemon and you add that lemon into a milk solution then what will happen 
of course you will get a beating with you from your mother why because you will make the milk sore that you can say to her that you have isolated the protein and this method is referred to as isoelectric precipitation okay but that won't stop her from beating you up okay so see this effect of ph when you reduce the ph then there is a point which is being reached where precipitation began to take place and this point is referred to as isoelectric precipitation dekho agar ph ko tum kam kar doge to ek aisa point reach hoga jahan par protein kya hogi precipitate out ho jayegi us point ko hum bolte hain isoelectric precipitation नींबू को दाल के दूध क्यों पड़ जाता है चाय क्यों पड़ जाती है क्योंकि वहां पर क्या हो जाता है प्रोटीन प्रेसिपिटेट आउट हो जाता है यू एड नाउ बेस्ड टू इट द प्रोटीन विल प्रेसिपिटेट इन दैट मींस आप फटे हुए दूध को भी सही कर सकते हो ठीक है यू कैन अगेन फ्रॉम द सोर मिल्क यू कैन अगेन मेक दैट मिल्क फाइन बाय एडिंग अ बेस यू न्यूट्रलाइज द एसिड एंड द प्रोटीन विल अगेन गेट डिसॉल्व इन टू okay so this is how the sour milk can be con getting converted into a perfect milk okay there is another thing there is another thing that is the protein solubility is also being influenced by salt okay one is referred to as salting in now salting in causes the protein to get dissolved in water okay now supposingly there is a solution now supposingly there is a solution i am going to make a solution probably if i could uh this is not working no i will take another tool uh and now i'm going to make a solution probably this will work okay now this is a glass that i have taken now in this glass there is a solution that i have placed now in this solution what is going to happen i am going to add certain molecules okay this is a water molecule water is being filled in it i'm just filling it with water okay so this is being filled in with water there are protein molecules which are present okay there is a protein molecule okay i am going to make a protein molecule okay there is a protein molecule which is present now what will happen this protein will have certain charges present over itself one is called as positive charge another one would be negative positive and negative charge now do you know that salt salt has both the type of charges charges present over itself for example nacl na being a cation positively charged molecule and cl being an anion negatively charged one when nacl will be dissolved in water these both charges molecules will shield the charge present over the protein molecules as they will shield the charge present over the protein molecules so water molecules so water molecules will now began to make solvation sphere now our water molecules began to make solvation sphere around this protein okay this water molecule began to make solvation sphere around this H2O, H2O, H2O. Okay, so there would be water molecules trying to make solvation sphere. Now this water molecule is going to make a solvation sphere around this protein molecule and is going to dissolve this protein molecule. Okay, this phenomena is called as salting. But it only takes place when NaCl is present in less amount. When NaCl is present in less amount, when salts. are added to solution in less amount these shields the positive or negative charge over proteins making them dissolve in solution okay protein has been dissolved in solution now what is going to happen now see what is going to happen now in the next case you add more amount of salt you add more amount of salt when you add you add high amount of salt high amount of salt to solution now what happens this water molecule has a dual nature it was firstly surrounding the protein molecule so that it can dissolve the protein molecule within itself okay but now it look at salt salt is easily available okay then why not to make solvation sphere along with salt leave the protein molecule let's make a new solvation sphere around salt molecule and water molecules now as they have dual nature 
so this water molecule has left the protein molecule and it has made a solvation sphere around the salt molecules it is now going to make a solvation sphere around the salt molecule okay so this is water molecule making solvation sphere around salt molecule salt molecules can be effectively solvated because they have a very smaller structure when you can get a smaller structure protein molecule easily why to look at protein molecule the water molecule moves towards the salt molecule theek hai are simple si baat hai na water molecules ne kya socha protein ko matlab gherne mein to bahut time lag raha hai bahut time lag raha hai itna dimag kharab ho raha hai aur ye salt molecule are ye to turant hi matlab mil jayega to wo kya water molecule ne kya kiya salt molecule ke charo taraf se gherke usi ko bind kar diya theek hai so because water molecule was requiring very high amount of energy to make solvation sphere around the protein molecule being the protein molecule larger in size so they thought why not to make a bond with this salt molecule and they make a solvation sphere with this salt molecule this phenomena is called as salting out however when large amount of salt are added to a protein in solution a precipitation of protein occurs this process is referred to as salting out of the protein last point for today's class effect of solvent organic solvent such as it sorry there are certain organic solvents which are present organic solvents such as acetone ethanol due to their lower dielectric constant lower the solvation power of their aqueous solution of protein these are the one that will lower down the solvation power of the aqueous solution of protein and thus will cause the proteins to be effectively dissolved okay because these molecules have lower dielectric constant so the solvation power of their aqueous solution is being reduced now coming back to your questions there were some questions from some of the students so how does researcher recognize that the structure present in center is iron atom only rather than uh, another atom in hemoglobin see it's very clear that when i would be talking about how the hemoglobin molecule is being produced actually hemoglobin molecule is being produced by the association of protoporphyrin 9 and this protoporphyrin 9 is able to make certain bonds only with the iron molecules thus the atom which is present in the center is iron secondly see there are chemical tests which are available as i have already told you about proteins that there were chemical tests so there are chemical tests which are available to present to check the presence of which atom is present in which protein and you can also visualize the same in x x rd x ray diffraction or uh, x ray diffraction or x ray fluorescence that which atom is present okay so there you can effectively test it out and you will get the answer that which atom is present in the center of the hemoglobin so that is iron so we are just uh, uh, completing this lecture here only tomorrow we will be talking about the simple proteins and conjugated proteins uh, unfortunately we didn't have any animations in this particular part because this is simple con conjugated protein this is core biochemistry and this part is for understanding rather than for animations so basically you must focus upon all these things and uh, try to read this lecture more than once the link will also be uploaded after the lecture all links have been uploaded almost all lectures are present on our youtube uh, channel so there you can look the, look at them date wise you can also ask your queries majority of you are not doing your mcqs please at least try to solve that mcq test and evaluation and catalyst okay so we will be talking about uh, sundry and other phenomena in the protein folding tomorrow at the same time the class is adjourned it's over for today you can ask your queries to me on whatsapp as well as here also as well as on youtube wherever you want Okay thank you good night bye bye